let's look at some common photographic situations you might be in and how to make them better with your Canon T1i. Now first off we have a cabin here. You're taking a picture of a cabin but the sky in the background looks like the main picture and there's not enough detail in the cabin picture. How do you solve that? Well let's look at back of the camera. We're going to make sure our display button is on. If it's not, it's on already or hit the shutter button halfway down too. And on the back you're going to be able to rotate around here by hitting the set and moving your four-way controller. In which case we're going to move it over to um, our exposure compensation. You're going to use your dial over here and you're going to turn that and you're going to bring your exposure compensation, which would normally be on zero, we'll bring it all the way up to plus two. Let's take a look at what it looks like. So here's the after, let's look at the before again and then let's look at the after. Now what's the opposite of this situation? Well the opposite would you be that you're in say a theater and the camera's seeing a lot of the dark area trying to brighten it up and while it's trying to brighten it up it washes out your stage. Well to change that it's the same kind of thing. I'm going to hit the set button on the back. We're already in exposure compensation. We're going to dial this down to minus one or so. Let's take a look at the improvement. Once again, the improvement before we'll do before, great, and we'll do after. And then once you have that compensation right, you can take a look at a couple other pictures here. We needed to balance out the large screen and the stage. Things are going to look a lot better. Here's another stage picture right here. Now here's another common situation. You're videotaping a wedding, whether it be for a friend or professionally, and let's go look at these shadow shots. See all the shadowing right here? Well, it's great that you're in shadows because you don't have harsh sun on the faces. The disadvantage is look in the background. You have the situation where it's washed out in the background. Um, so how do we solve this? You want to use a flash, but you don't want to use too much flash or you're going to get a face that everything looks a little flash-like. Let's go to the next shot. There's the after. Use flash, but we used a little flash compensation. And let's show you how to do that. On the back of the camera, we're in our display again. You're going to hit your set and you're going to go to where it says the flash. It's already on minus one. We usually put it on minus one to minus two. That gives you the flash, but it's not so powerful that it doesn't look so good. Let's take a look at some examples. Now this next shot was one where we didn't have it on minus two. You notice how she's a little, it looks a little flashy. And flashy in the sense that you could tell it's a flash. I don't like that look. I like to have it a little less. So here again, let's look at the ones. This is with the minus two. You see how natural it looks? Yeah, it's bright in the background, but let's look at a few more shots here. Once again, it's a little bit underexposed on purpose, so it doesn't look like, oh, that was done with a flash. And here's another one. This is just done with the on-camera flash, by the way. Now here's another interesting uh, thing. If you want to have fun, this is just to have fun, you can work with your f-stop and if you get a little low f-stop you can get interesting situation. Now looks like the cars are pretty lined up but let me show you what it looks like in real life. Okay, here's our little toy car and look there's the big car. Let's take a look at the back of the screen, show you how we did this back of the camera. What you want to do again from your information screen is hit the set button Make sure up here you're in AV or aperture priority. And let's take a look at the back of the camera. We're going to hit our set button. We're going to rotate through till we get all the way to the top. It's F5.6. You're going to try to bring this down as low as it can go. In this case, F4.5. And then zoom in from a distance to compress your image. That'll make sure um, your background is out of focus. Let's take a look at the picture again. See the background's out of focus and it's a short depth of field and by zooming in at a distance you're going to be able to create this illusion of um, compression between the two cars plus with the low f-stop. And there's the two again. Now here's a, the reverse of that. It looks like Kayla's almost standing on Shay's hand but she's way at the distance. This is not done with Photoshop or anything. By the way, none of the pictures in here have been manipulated in any way. We didn't even change the color or sharpness or anything. These are original pictures. So the reason it looks like that is that we set the f-stop high. And just to show you on the back of the camera, while we're in the f-stop, I'm going to hit the set button, turn our dial, and bring that up as high as we possibly can. That'll make sure everything is in focus 
as best possible between your things close and far away. And you can see right now, K Kayla is not in focus. That's because we set the f-stop down to 4.5. Now here's a shot of Shay and Kayla taken a few seconds later. And you're looking at Shay and you go, well, I can use some flash on that, but I'm so close that the flash would probably do look way too sharp. So instead, let's look at the after picture. Wow, what did we do? It wasn't flash, it wasn't a light. How did we do that? We used a white card. And there is Trevor with the white card. It's just a piece of foam core, costs $2.50 at Hobby Lobby, but can make all the difference. Now here's a shot, and this is not a problem shot needing to be solved, but we wanted to create a, a range of motion to have something look like uh, it was really speeding really fast. So to do this, you can have your shutter speed at, you don't want it too fast, but the shutter speed could be at 1 60th of a second. But the most important thing is you need to move with the bike. And I'll show you how to do this if we can go on camera one here. So as the bike is going by, I've sort of practiced and pre-focused by using the fence as a rough estimate and had the biker go by. And what I do is I shoot the shot as he's going by. It takes a little bit of practice, but you've got to keep moving your camera, stay a little bit ahead, move as he's going by. It may take you five or ten times, but you'll get some really neat shots. And here's another shot coming up of the dog. It didn't come out perfectly, but if you were to frame this and maybe add a little posterization, it sort of makes like an interesting uh, sort of artsy look. But once again, the dog is more in focus than the background because I'm moving the camera following the dog. 